Now that we have caged young mated queens, Reg and his crew can make up packages of workers to go with them. The wood screen packages are made up in advance, but they remain fastened together until they are moved to the yard, because that way they are easier to transport. The objective is to shake workers from the combs of these strong colonies down into the package without taking the colony's queen. This requires two work crews. The first crew goes down the row looking for the queen in each hive. When she is found, she is set aside and combs full of bees are put outside the hive for the shaking crew. The queen is then returned to the hive. That way, the shaking crew can simply shake bees and not worry about hunting for the queen. The shaking crew will be filling orders for either three or five pound packages. And yes, they are weighed occasionally to verify weights. An additional measure is allowed for mortality during transit. It is not good to shake the packages too much. If it happens during a nectar flow, the bees' honey stomachs could be ruptured. Back at the truck, each package gets a can of sugar syrup and a new caged queen. Only three holes are punched in the can, just enough for bees to gradually drink the syrup. The post office won't tolerate leaking, sticky, messy packages. Because they are so disoriented, workers in the package almost always accept the new queen in her cage, even though she is not their own. A portable air compressor makes short work out of stapling packages shut and the final prep for shipping. At the warehouse, Reg addresses packages, applies state health certificates, and vacuums off the hobos. If they are kept cool and ventilated, these packages can survive a journey to almost any place in the world. And now for some more honey and bee trivia. During the critical first three days of a larva's life, royal jelly has 34% sugar content, but worker food has only 12%. For years, our industry didn't change much. Then in the 1980s, two new parasites, tracheomites and varroa mites, entered the country and quickly killed thousands of bee colonies. In the 1990s, we are seeing bees with African genes move into our country, bees that unfortunately have some undesirable characteristics. No doubt the joys of beekeeping will continue for years to come, but the methods will change. All of this underscores the importance of being an informed beekeeper, and one of the best ways to do that is to join an active beekeeping association. Almost every state has at least one state association and several local or regional associations. Your county extension agent can help you find the one nearest you. Today I'm here to help state associations meet once or twice a year. Two fine examples are the state associations of North Carolina and South Carolina. We visited their summer meetings, and you can see for yourself the kind of opportunities these meetings provide. These meetings are usually bigger and include speakers from universities and state or federal agencies. This is perhaps the best way to stay up on the latest news and research in apiculture. Most meetings have a mixture of traditional speakers and workshops covering special topics like disease treatment, pollination, beeswax crafts, or new beekeeping inventions. There is almost always a merchant's display at state meetings. This is a good chance to shop for equipment and supplies and see the latest new products. But the best part of a state bee meeting is visiting other beekeepers from all over your region. 
Just like your local association, this networking always works to your advantage. But more than that, beekeepers just plain make good company. You will enjoy the company of people with like interests and a friendly outlook on life. Beekeeping is such a long-standing tradition that there are hundreds of fine publications written to help beekeepers do their craft. It's important to be well-read if you want to use the best available information in your business. There's a mixture of classic texts, magazines, and periodic newsletters. Let's go over some of the most important titles to help you start building your bee library. First, some of the classic reference books. Every beekeeper should have at least one of these. ABC and XYZ of Bee Culture. This alphabetic encyclopedia has been continuously published since 1877. The 40th edition was published in 1990. The new edition is easy to read and has up-to-date information on parasitic mites and Africanized bees. The Hive and the Honey Bee. This is the oldest comprehensive bee text in the United States, first published in 1853. The latest revision was published in 1992 and has over 1,000 pages covering all aspects of bees and beekeeping. Here's some good titles for beginning or intermediate beekeepers. Hive Management. This book is perfect for those who already know the basics and want to begin improving the efficiency and profitability of their beekeeping. It stresses a year-round management outlook. How to Keep Bees and Sell Honey a practical how-to guide with lots of helpful illustrations. The Beekeeper's Handbook. This readable guide has quickly become a standard text for beginners. Easy to read, practical, and full of good illustrations. Now for some periodicals. Every beekeeper should subscribe to at least one of these to stay informed on a monthly basis. American Bee Journal. This is the oldest U.S. beekeeping magazine, first published in 1861. It carries articles of interest for all levels of beekeeping, from hobbyist to commercial, and includes research papers and other technical reports. Gleanings in Bee Culture. Published since 1872, this magazine covers all areas of beekeeping and pays special attention to hobbyists and beginners. The Speedy Bee, a monthly beekeeper's newspaper that caters to the needs of commercial beekeepers and honey producers. Don't overlook your county extension office for beekeeping literature tailored to your state. Many extension offices have beekeeping bulletins, leaflets, and newsletters available free of charge. Well, we covered some odds and ends today, but that's the nature of beekeeping. There's a time for the beekeeper to work hard, then there's a time to sit back and let the bees work for us. Let's hope they're bringing in a lot of sourwood honey. This is also a good time to go over honeybee diseases and pests. This is a year-round problem for beekeepers, but we'll have to cover it in our next show, so don't miss it. See you then.